Martin, what uh, often happens, I get talking to my interviewees after we've packed everything away, and you just told me a gem of a story. If you'd like to, uh, two gems of stories, would you like to repeat them? Well, it's about missed opportunities and not having self-belief. And I've got two wonderful examples of that, not from the equine racing world, but from uh, my social life. And when I used to hang out with Mel Smith, there was an occasion when he was going to do a comedy recording in a studio in London that evening. So we went to the studio and behind the desk doing the engineering and producing was Roger Scott of Queen. Roger Taylor, sorry, of Queen. And uh, so... I spent the time with him behind the desk getting him silk cut and sandwiches to keep him going through the evening and uh, he said oh do you want to hear a song we've just done so he put a in those days it was a cassette so he put a cassette in and I said yeah I'd love to hear it and Mel was the other side of the glass so it was just Roger Taylor and me listening and he put it in and it was under pressure with David Barry it comes to the end of the song and I said to him, I said, oh, it needs a saxophone. You've got to have a saxophone there. He said, you're absolutely right. We thought we needed a saxophone. Can you play? I said, no, I can't. He said, oh, that's a shame. He said, you look the part, you do. And it's sad because I wanted to play the saxophone when I was younger, but I couldn't afford to buy one. The music teacher at school said to me, when I said I want to play a saxophone, he said, can you afford one? Have you got one? I said, no. He said, well, you can't play it then. So that was an opportunity when I could have been playing a saxophone and the end of Under Pressure the other one was when I had a cottage down in Sussex at Peasmarsh, that's quite near where Paul McCartney lives. And I went to Ashford Station in Kent once to get a train into London and I walked into the first class compartment, which I could afford in those days because the Sunday Times paid for the ticket. <laughs> I went to a first class compartment, there was Paul McCartney and I walked into the compartments and I said, oh fuck, do you want to be alone? And that turns out to have been a wonderful way to start a conversation with Paul because he swore every other word. And secondly, I respected his privacy. And we spent a whole hour from Ashford to London chatting away. It made me feel totally at ease. And as we drew in, he said, come on, what are you doing today? And I said, oh, I've um, got to see, he was the dullest man in the world that I had to have dinner with. I had to have lunch with him. I said, I've got to have lunch with someone. He's one of my editors in the sports paper. And... Paul said, no, no, come on, let's have a day out. He said, I've got to buy a present for Linda, his wife, then he wanted to buy a present. He was just innocently going to the shops to try to buy a nice present. So down to earth. I said, no, I don't want to be a pest. He said, you're not a pest, come on, come on, spend, we can spend the day together. And I said, oh, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. I've got he said, oh, okay, then. And he went down the corridor singing. And I thought, I just left one of the great stars of my life and anyone's life. And he's gone down the corridor singing and I could have been with him. And I loved, subsequently found out that he liked to recruit people from the immediate community where he lived. And he doesn't go through formal interviews. That's what he does. He just meets someone he likes and gives them a job. And I subsequently found out that as a young Sunday Times journalist, I would have been perfect for NPL, his company. And uh, two big opportunities missed. So always have the courage to believe in yourself, especially in horse racing. Otherwise, you're going to let yourself down. Never miss an opportunity. Go for it.